Good morning, or depending on you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice the radio. So today, we need to take a little bit of a look at the Gen 1 Evolution. Yeah, that's right. We've got them there, Gen 1 Eevees, that we need to be taking just a little bit of a look at. And I'm going to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if I love these as much as I do the other ones we've looked at so far, but let's take a little bit of a gander and hopefully we can find something to love about them. It is, of course, really important to remember these are going to have VMAXs. So as we look at them, we need to bear in mind they are going to have VMAXs, so that is going to fundamentally change how we feel about these cards. But we've looked at some already like Umbreon and Sylveon and Leafeon that look really, really good, even without the VMAXs. So there is quite a bit to live up to here. So starting off with Flareon then, we got 210 HP. I should mention our translations come from the lovely Antoine Boulet. But I'm assuming by now you probably, you probably guessed that. And 210 HP is is fine. It's about right. We've got a retreat cost of two, which does mean you get free retreat with air balloon, which isn't too bad. And we've got a weakness to water, which might not be great. Inteleon's been doing a lot better recently. Ice Rider Calyrex is starting to look like it might be a little bit of a force in the metagame, so I'm not loving the weakness. And as for being a fire Pokemon, sure, you are hitting weakness against stuff like Zacian, which is awesome. But remember, you've lost all of your tricks like Welder, which is not ideal. You are, however, a single strike Pokemon, so you've got all of that. We'll mention it as we go through. First attack, one colorless energy, 20 damage. Search your deck for a fire energy. Attach it to this Pokemon. Shuffle your deck. Okay, it's fine. It's all right. It's not brilliant. You see, in terms of attaching the energy, that's kind of cool. But I've long been a little bit reticent about attacks like this, purely for the fact that what you essentially do is search your deck for an energy. You attach your energy and then you sit there in the active. And you wait. And the thing is, I don't necessarily just want to sit and wait, all right? If I'm perfectly honest with you. Because I'm letting my opponent have a hit on my two prize Pokemon. Sure, it gets me the energy, which I can start using next turn. That's all lovely and brilliant, etc. But I'm not sure how I feel about attaching an energy and then just, you know, sitting there waiting. It might not be ideal. The damage doesn't look great on the face of it, but it's not actually terrible. Single strike Pokemon means you can use single strike energy. And there are going to be Pokemon around, like for instance, Jirachi Amazing Rare, that because of the weakness, you will actually get a one-hit KO on with a single strike energy. Not to mention, if you start building in stuff like Embor to do an extra 30 damage, and Karen to do an extra 20 damage for each prize card your opponent's taken, and then start hitting for weakness, this could actually be a decent single energy attacker. I mean, if your opponent's taken three prizes and you've got a single strike energy on there, then you're actually hitting 100 damage, which isn't too bad at all. As for the second attack, free energy, 120, plus burn, and I'm not loving it. Now, don't get me wrong, right? In terms of the damage, you're fine, but remember that 120 is not enough to KO a lot of single prize Pokemon. We talk a lot on this channel, because it's super relevant, about the 120-130 divide. This is on the wrong side. Those Pokemon with 130, you won't be getting a KO on. That's really genuinely a little bit sad. You will get a KO on stuff that's weak like Zacian, but you won't be getting a KO on any V Maxes that are weak which kind of sucks, unless, of course, you start playing around with the single strike tricks, your single strike energy, Embor, Karen, etc. But the thing that really irks me about this particular attack is that you cannot accelerate energy with Houndoom. You see, we've had a ruling out of Japan that Houndoom cannot accelerate impact energy, which counts as any energy. It can only accelerate single strike energy, which counts as fighting in darkness only. And your attack cost here is fire, fire, colorless. So we can't use Houndoom. And Welder's rotated out. And sure, don't get me wrong, you attach for turn. Use Burning Breath. Attach an energy. And it is from your deck the first attack, which is quite nice. Then turn two, you attach and do 120. But come on. No. Do not like this very much at all. 
It's the wrong kind of energy. It's not enough damage. It's not as good being a fire Pokemon post-rotation, which is basically when we get this, as good as it is pre-rotation. And I'm sorry, but I don't think this V is going to see a huge amount of play at all. Now, moving on to the one that hits that for weakness, we can take a little bit of a look at Vaporeon V. And what we've got here is, again, we've got 210 HP, which is standard, retreat cost of 2, and a weakness to Lightning, which is honestly not bad. Lightning decks are great pre-rotation, post-rotation, not so much. Tapu Koko's winning here and there over in Japan. It's doing okay, but it's not a weakness you need to be terrified about, which is lovely. And the first attack I do kind of like. Single colorless energy, triple draw. One colorless energy, and, and the translation Antoine gave me was, do that. Yeah, cool. Draw three cards. And that's okay. It's not brilliant. It's not amazing. It's okay. It's fine. We do actually have two Pokemon post-rotation that will be able to do this. We've got Hitmontop. But Hitmontop does make you discard a card from your hand, so it's not perfect. And EVV. And I am loving the symmetry here. EVV also for a single colorless energy lets you draw three cards. And I don't think this is a reason to play Vaporeon. Don't get me wrong. No, no one's going to play Vaporeon for this attack. I mean, to be fair, it's got a better weakness than Eevee and 20 more HP. So if you do want it, okay, the retreat cost is more, but Air Balloon kind of makes it a push. This is nice. I like it more than Eevee for this first attack. But really, this is a, I am playing this for the other attack, or I'm playing the VMAX. And while I'm here, turn one, go second. And I mention this a lot in these videos. If I'm going second, I want a single energy basic Pokemon attack. And this is a decent single energy basic Pokemon attack. Not a reason to play Vaporeon, but a wonderful bonus. As for the second attack, two water, one colorless energy, 20 damage, Switch with one of your bench. Okay. It's a hit and run Pokemon. And the thing is, because you're a water Pokemon, you can use Frost Moth to accelerate energy. Because you're a Rapid Strike Pokemon, you can use Rapid Strike Energy. And Rapid Strike Energy pays water fighting, so we'll absolutely pay this. So energy-wise, we're doing quite well in terms of being able to get the energy on and getting rolling. I just worry about hit and run decks in the format we're in. I mean, the best wall we've got, because you need a wall to switch into when you have a hit and run deck, is Lily's Pokedoll. It's an item card you play as a Pokemon. It doesn't give up a prize. Job's a good one. But actually, I'm not sure, because that's rotating out. Now, I do personally quite like Casola. If you KO it, your opponent flips a coin, and if heads, you also get KO'd. That's kind of annoying. But casola has been out for a while and hasn't seen a huge amount of play. Plus, hit and run decks are not that great at the moment because everyone's playing boss's orders. And Rapid Strike Urshifu can start hitting the bench quite nicely. And I'm not sure, ladies and gentlemen. I will say, if you want to play a hit and run deck, this has good damage. And it is a payable attack. But I'm not sure that the hit and runness of this is quite good enough. So you're going to have to forgive me for being a little bit apprehensive at the outset. And finally then, we need to have a little bit of a pivot and have a little bit of a chat about Jolteon V. Now, Jolteon V goes down to 190 HP, which is not good. We want more. But it does at least have the decency to have free retreat. And to be fair, having free retreat is kind of awesome. You do have a weakness to fighting, though, with things like Rapid Strike Urshifu running around and things like Crobat being weak to fighting. It's not a good weakness to have. It, it's one that people are going to be gunning for and one that is going to be naturally hit by some of the best decks. Anyway, it's not great. Being a lightning Pokemon does mean you'll hit stuff like Inteleon for weakness, so you never know that could be relevant moving forward. But I'm not loving the low HP. And this is neither single nor rapid strike. So you don't get any of those extra tricks. And honestly, right, the first attack here, I'm not a fan. One colorless energy, 20 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. It's not enough. It's just not enough. I'd like it to be more. More would be awesome. 
but I don't like it. it. It's just not good enough, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, we can go back to the days of Manectric EX, which is another two prize lightning Pokemon. And Manectric EX did 20 to the active and 20 to one of your opponent's bench for a single colorless energy. That was something worth getting a little bit excited about. This isn't good enough, and I really don't like it. As for the second attack, Lightning Double Colorless, flip four coins, and you do 60 damage for each heads that you flip. Okay. I can get along with that. I can be on board with that. That's kind of cool. If you can flip enough heads. And the problem is that your expectation here, if everything goes as it should, your expectation is flip four coins, get two heads. So now you're talking about free energy 120. Is free energy 120 good enough? On a two-prize Pokemon with a bad weakness? I would suggest probably not. And that's my problem here. Now, don't get me wrong. Glimwood Tangle is still a thing. It's still in the format. You get to reflip. And there is every possibility that you flip three or four heads. And 180 gets a KO on a Crobat. That's lovely. Four heads is 240. That'll basically get any Pokemon V. But you can't rely on that. And that means that basically the best thing about Jolteon V is the free retreat. The first attack just doesn't do enough. And the second attack only does enough if you can flip three or four heads. And if I'm putting free energy onto a multiple prize Pokemon, I want something more than this'll be good if I can flip three heads. And I do not think that is something we can rely on at all. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I am not a fan. The VMAXs will probably make these cards a lot better. But as it stands at the moment, I don't think these are particularly good cards. And I'm not particularly excited. And I think part of the problem is we've seen some other EVs which are um pretty gosh darned exciting. But I'd like to know what you think about all of these. And I'd like to know if you think I am underselling any of these. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.